Hey everyone, so we're now going to finish off with the third video in the pneumonia series on the treatment of pneumonia. Now, to be very clear, the mainstay of treatment for pneumonia are antibiotics. We want to have the best antibiotic for the specific pneumonia that we have, the specific agent that's causing pneumonia. However, we simply don't have the time to go over all of those different regimens, all of those different antibiotics. So instead, and since this is because it's a nursing series, we're going to focus on the nursing questions and interventions that you would pursue when providing care for pneumonia. So let's get started. A few questions you want to ask. You want to find out if the patient can clear their own airway. You want to know if they are getting adequate oxygenation. Is their infection being resolved or is it worsening? And are they being adequately nourished and hydrated? And last but not least, is their pain being relieved and or under control? And let's be very clear, it's the patient that decides. You don't decide if it's being relieved, they decide if they're able to tell you. So I'm going to go over each one of these different principles in detail. But if you don't remember the details, I do want you to remember these core ideas. Airway, oxygenation, infection, nourishment and hydration, and pain. If you can remember that in terms of the interventions for treatment in pneumonia, you'll be able to at least have a good foundation for how to pursue treatment. So let's get moving. For the airway, we want to start off by assessing their respiratory effort and their lung sounds. A lot of the details that I'm going to be discussing, you will unfortunately not be able to cover in these videos, but you will hopefully be covering in your nursing courses. So we don't have time to go over the lung sounds, but it's important that you understand that you need to know the lung sounds and that you need to be able to assess the respiratory system. Things that you can do are to teach coughing and deep breathing techniques to improve the clearance of the airways. If they're not able to clear their airways, suctioning and or providing nebulized medications to liquefy the secretions to make them easier to cough up are two technical interventions that you can do. Hydration is always important to once again help uh, liquefy the thick secretions and being well hydrated when you have secretions is important because you're obviously diverting fluid from your intravascular system into the secretions in your lungs. And then you always want to reassess after every intervention. So every time you do an action, you want to reassess to see how it's affected the individual's airway. Next, we have oxygenation where we're talking about the distribution of goods, of energy, of groceries to your body tissues. So your brain tissue, your muscle tissue. We want to make sure that we're assessing the respiratory system to ensure that's functioning so that you're making that gas exchange. And then we also want to look at the mental status because if you are being deoxygenated, if you are hypoxic, then your mental status will be one of the first things that will change. It will confuse, you may not speak well, and being able to understand and assess these systems is very important to understanding oxygenation. You want to monitor O2 saturations and arterial blood gases. You want to reduce fever and promote rest so you can slow down the metabolism and reduce the consumption of oxygen. We want to elevate the head of the bed so that gravity will expand the lungs and provide more surface area for gas exchange. And if none of those things work, if they're not sufficient, then we'll probably end up providing oxygen and or we'll be considering intubation so that we can mechanically support the process of breathing and, ox and oxygenation. After these, we're looking at the state of the infection. We want to monitor the individual's vital signs, so their blood pressure, their heart rate, their respiratory rate, their temperature, how much pain they're in, to have an idea of the progression or state of the infection. We want to assess the secretions for their color, their thickness, how much is being produced. Remember that the secretions are a response to the infection, so a change in the secretions will indicate a change in the infection. We want to assess the effectiveness of the antimicrobial therapy. So if the individual has had no change in their status 
over the course of one to two weeks and they've been on specific antimicrobial therapy, well then we need to start questioning whether it's being effective and whether that therapy needs to be changed. We want to monitor for deterioration and by that we mean we want to ensure that no secondary infections or sepsis occurs. We don't want a cascade of infections to, to develop in the entire body. Sepsis is a very dangerous state for the body to be in and it, it dramatically increases your mortality and morbidity. Lastly, you need to know and practice infection prevention and control. This is an area in our industry that is relatively weak. It can make a huge difference in the quality of life and quality of care that we provide to our patients and in our hospitals. And I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to know this very well. In terms of pain management, it's straightforward, but it's nonetheless important. We need to assess their pain, administer analgesics or anti-cough medications if required and indicated. We can teach relaxation and distraction techniques to help cope with that pain personally. And we can provide comfort measures like adequate sleep, food, hygiene to help maintain their pain. Sust I'm sorry, not maintain their pain, but help cope their with their pain. And lastly, we can also teach splinting techniques. Coughing can cause a lot of pain if they've been coughing a lot. And by teaching a splinting technique against the coughing, such as holding a pillow up against the belly while they cough, it can help reduce their pain. Last but not least, their nutrition and hydration. Finding the baseline weight and nutritional status can give us an indication for when those things change. So if their baseline weight has gone down or up over the course of a week, we would then start to wonder if they are being adequately nourished or hydrated. This gives a very strong indication for how well they are coping with being in the hospital. We want to monitor their intake and their ability to tolerate oral intake. Bear in mind that if someone cannot tolerate oral intake, it probably means that they're not swallowing well, which also means that they're at risk for aspirating. And we want to very much avoid the risk for aspiration pneumonia and reinfection. We want to provide meals. This may seem simple, but for the individual who can't necessarily feed themselves, Putting the meal in front of them does not help. We have to ensure that they are provided and assisted in having their meals. We want to ensure that we schedule interventions and medical procedures outside of meal time, so not getting an x-ray right at supper or at lunchtime, because then they would miss their meal. And last but not least, kind of a synopsis of everything, we want to monitor their in and outs, so everything that goes in and everything that goes out to make sure there's an even balance. We want to monitor all of their vital signs because they reflect your nutrition and your hydration. We want to look at their skin trigger, so how taut or loose their skin is. If you're dehydrated and you pinch your skin, your skin will remain pinched for a little while longer. These, some of these concepts you'll be learning about even more in your nursing courses. And of course, we would provide IV fluids when necessary if they're not able to sustain their own intake. So that pretty much covers all of those concepts. Let's quickly go back to the main themes. So remember that you want to maintain the patient's airway. You want to ensure that they have adequate oxygenation. You need to keep an eye on their infection, whether it's becoming worse or whether it's being resolved. Always maintain that they're being nourished and hydrated. And you always want to check if the patient's pain is under control, and they will tell you if it is under control. So here are the references for your perusal if you want to follow up more on the ideas that were brought up in this lecture. I hope that you found this lecture interesting and that the course of lectures was understandable and concise. If you have any questions, comments, or queries, put them in the comments section below. Please like the video if you did and let me know what you think could be done to improve it. I hope you have a wonderful day, and cheers!